Next question is from Jamil A144. If you had to remove the big three exercises, what could you replace them with that would be comparable? Oh. We, what are we going to say the big three are? A squat, squat dead, overhead dead, press? Overhead no, press? well, they, bench, I, probably for what they, yeah, they usually, big three is usually bench press, yeah. squat, and uh, deadlift is usually what they say. Maybe we should do four. Throw in some overhead press if you yeah, want, because that's I, when I, I feel like that's a staple. Yeah, so do I. All right, this, this is easy for me. So uh, back squat. Um, if I had to never do a back squat again, um, the exercise I would do as much as a back squat would be a front squat, in my opinion. Oh, uh, I would go Bulgarian. Well, I, I see. The thing is, I that's still on the table, but the exercise to replace back squats for me would be front squat. I just mm. feel like it's close enough to providing the benefits of a back squat. Um, although a Bulgarian. Is is pretty damn good. It's yeah, I'm trying to think too. of something because first of all, why would you remove the big three? The only reason why you would remove the big three is maybe you don't have the barbell, right? And so, yeah. how can I? I think it's just a hypothetical question, you know, just for yeah. shits and giggles. Yeah. Because the, I mean, if that's it's the, philosophical, yeah, if that's a, if that's the <laughs> case, then I can get on board a little bit with the front squat. Although I still, I, I what what I experienced, you know, and this was late later in my career of of really focusing on the Bulgarian split squat, the, the benefits that I got from that uh, were tremendous. And I saw uh, a lot of carryover into my squat, my leg size, uh, my stability, my hip mobility from it, yeah. my ankle mobility from it. Yeah. Uh, I just, I prefer that. We're, we're already so anteriorly driven. So doing something like a front squat. Yeah, over, I, you know, when I compare and, though, you're looking at the, the, the activation of the back, the low back, the ankle mobility, and then, you know, from watching Olympic lifters who are the best front squatters in the world, mm. these guys are front squatting tremendous amounts of weight. And that's what a back squat's great at. A back squat is amazing because you can load the hell out of it. Yeah. So it makes it one of the best exercises. I think the front squat is closer to that. Like you could load the hell. You can get really, really good at front squats. Well, where do you, you stand can, on this, Justin? Yeah. Well, I've actually seen athletes like really load heavy Bulgarian squats. Fuck yeah, you can. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting uh, to to speculate about because it if that is like you you prize that as much as a, a back loaded squat. Uh, I've seen athletes actually really take off uh, in their strength gains and their stability simultaneously. So. I think that, like, uh, from an athletic perspective, from an athletic perspective yeah. and it, functional perspective, yeah, I sure, think. Yeah. right. So, but I, I mean, I love the front squat too. It's just, I think that I would probably lean more in the Bulgarian. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, the next exercise would be the uh, deadlift. That's easy for me, uh, and I don't know if this is cheating, but I do a trap bar deadlift. Is, is that too close? I know, right? Can I pick that? Yeah, I feel like that's too close. <laughs> is it too close? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, see. I think it's different enough. How about a hip thrust? For a deadlift? Ooh. Oh no, uh, no, nah, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Or, or or a barbell row. I mean, you got to do something. You got to. We got to do something for. So you got to pick something up heavy. Yeah. Well, you got to do something for the back, right? Yeah. So I mean, you got to do a big mover for the back. If yeah, you're but deadlifts are like hips. It's you know. It's, it's well, yeah. That's so why many, it's irreplaceable. It's irreplaceable. If I had to re ir get rid of it, the barbell row. Just doing the barbell row, you get some of the glute, hip, hamstring stabilization to hold that position. So it's mm. not being eliminated. So there's yeah. there's value in doing a 135 bent over row. Your hips are involved. Your glutes are involved. They're not moving and they're not flexing seam, but they're at least in a, in, they're in a, a, a isometric hold in that position. I'm just trying and you're to, rowing big weight on your back. I'm just trying to hmm. think of right now the strength that you get from a deadlift. You know, I think obviously trap bar deadlift, you guys say that's cheating. I, I can kind of see that because it's so similar. Right. Uh, farmer, heavy farmer walks would be up there for me because mm. of the kind of strength that like it that. provides. It's yeah. kind of similar to a deadlift. Uh, you're right. Yeah, because it's a, an all-encompassing kind of a uh, strength that you're you're getting out from the deadlift. Like it, so I think that the farmer walk actually does sort of uh, accomplish a similar. Uh, you know, type of uh, you know, body response because you're stabilizing everything at once yeah. with your heavy weight, especially if you're like really loading it heavy. I mm -hmm. think that that's well, valuable. that's my case for the bent over barbell row. Because the bent over barbell row is going to get the hamstring and glute involved in the stabilization. The lower back is extremely is, is is in there, just like a, a, far, a farmer carry. The stabilization that you're getting with heavy load, you do that with a heavy barbell. You're getting all mm. that in the hips and the hamstrings, and then low back, yeah. and then in addition to that. You're rowing and getting the lats and rhomboids involved. The barbell row would have to be the exercise. Well, but here's do. the thing, though: I, it, it, does it mean you can't do other back exercises? You know what I'm saying? Like we're replacing the deadlift, but does that mean okay? So let's say we we pick the farmer's walk. 
that means you can still do pull-ups. You could still do dumbbell right. rows. You could still do... It's just you never do deadlifts again. Yeah. That's yeah. the question. And if I never did deadlifts again, but I still had access to all these other exercises, the one that I would replace it with, and if I can't pick a trap bar, I'm thinking again, farmer walk. I just, mm. just the kind of strength that I get from the deadlift, you know? That's a tough one, though. I think that's it, the hardest one to replace. That is a hard one. Bench press. Uh, is it cheating if I say incline? Yeah. Incline press? Or yeah. dumbbells. Yeah. I mean, is that cheating? Because I feel like those are great Well, you kind of got to remove the barbell, I would think. You know? Okay. Yeah, so if we, we do like dumbbell, bench, incline, yeah, I'll heavy. Take I'll take dumbbell, incline, bench all day. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even a dumbbell flat. You know what's funny? You take out the barbell bench press, you're not missing much. That's, I, I know. Mean, I hate it's... to say it, but if you just never did it and all you did were, you know, D dumbbells and incline and dips. You'll be fine. Yeah, you're going to be okay. You would miss barbell squats and you would definitely miss uh, deadlifts. deadlifts. Yeah. Now, overhead barbell press. I mean, again, what are we going to say? You know, dumbbell press overhead? <laughs> it's kind of the same exercise. Well, yeah, you have because there's nothing that, I'm, or at least I'm drawing a blank right now of like getting you in full overhead extension. You can't, you can't eliminate that movement. That's such no. an important movement that you have. And if you're saying that you if can't. you never do it, you're yeah, screwed. Yeah, you have to do it. And a front delt raise and a lateral, none of those come close to that. Like it's a not, handstand push up's not going to cut it. Yeah. yeah that's although, not, although, that's good. It actually, does, um, although that's a good. But actually, that would be good. I know, but like you're just dealing with body weight is is the only thing. It's it's definitely very very challenging, and it and it sort of tur obviously turns it up on its head, right? But uh, yeah, it's a very similar movement. I like that. I honestly, that's because I was drawing a blank on because I'm looking for something that you're getting your full extent, you're fully extended over your head. That's the that is the most important yeah. part yeah. for everybody. Why that movement belongs in yeah. every routine is because. We lose that just very of, of all the things too. That's up there with the the things that I think we lose the fastest. That's I, mean, I that's what yeah. I used to see in my older clients. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the number one aside from not being able to squat, not be able to you know do you know, their posture. They couldn't reach not straight e up above. Not their head. even older. I, I found this in myself. That was one of the limiting factors why I didn't do overhead press. I mean, I was in my twenties and I already had to arch my low back to get full extension. I mean, we are just so all rounded, right? We're all yeah. so forward. We're always reaching in front. Yeah, and if you're not training that, it's really, really tough for you to try and get that back, you know, and it takes a lot of work to get back to that place. So, yeah, the, Justin, I actually think the, the old yeah, standing... Yeah, actually does make sense. I can't think of that. anything else yeah. that would, would incorporate... Is it kettlebell a, overhead press count, or is that still well, yeah, I, yeah, and see, my brain would, would go more for the spiral line type of a press with a kettlebell, just because it's a different uh, load, but it's more favorable uh, functional. I or, like the kettlebell overhead press more than dumbbell overhead press. I and do, I, and you, I if you too. asked me five years ago, I would have never said that, but or now that your, I've done them enough... Your yeah. overhead carries. Overhead carries. Overhead carries with the with kettlebells would yep, be sure. I do those a lot with my son, you know that because that full extension is yes. such a difficult thing. Yeah. So we just practice walking with a single dumbbell or two dumbbells overhead. Great exercise, and it keeps that 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 full extension. Now we're re-emphasizing like the importance of that, so your body is going to be able to keep that. Yeah. After riding strong and training strong too, I became a huge fan of circus presses. That Did was you? that was not like a ever a a common movement for me. I love that. I was doing them just the other day again. Like that, that exercise because yeah. you get you get to use a little bit of body English to get the weight up there, so yeah. I can go yeah, it's a, fun. A high low. And when I think about it, like it, you would kind of get like to get a, a really heavy weight up over your head. You kind of yeah, would kind of to throw it up. You would, and you yeah. would kind of you know use whatever leverage you could to push over your head. Like you wouldn't have this strict perfect. That's form. a fun exercise. It though. is a it's a fun exercise. It's a good exercise. I feel a lot of core stability in there. A lot of shoulder stability in there. I, that's a that's a up there with one of my favorites.